Hey everyone, Windows 11 comes with a lot of settings that are on by default. Most make sense, but there are some annoying ones and some that you probably don't need at all. In this video, I'm gonna share the settings I always change whenever I install Windows. For me, adjusting these settings really enhances my overall experience. The settings I'll cover are from the latest version of Windows 11, but most of them can also be applied to Windows 10. So let's get started. First up is the Start menu. If you don't like the overcrowded parts of the Start menu here, there's a simple way to clean up that mess. Go to your Windows settings, then choose Personalization and click on Start. At the top, you'll see three options. The default setting gives you an equal amount of space for pinned items and recommendations, while the other two options allow for either more pinned items or more recommendations. Below you'll find additional settings that you can switch on or off to personalize the Start menu. Personally, I usually prefer to keep these settings off. When I return to the Start menu, it gives me more room to work with. Another option you have is to add shortcuts to the Start menu. You can add the shortcuts by selecting folders. From there, you can enable the shortcuts you want. For now, I'll choose Pictures, Videos, and Downloads, so when I click on Windows, I can easily access these locations. Next up is the Privacy Settings. Microsoft tends to push its services and suggested content in Windows, which can be pretty annoying. Luckily, getting rid of those ads and pop-ups is simpler than you might expect. Just head to the Settings, click on Privacy and Security on the left, then select General. From there, you can turn off all five of those settings. Let websites show me locally relevant content by accessing my language list. Let Windows improve start and search results by tracking app launches. Show me suggested content in the Settings app. Show me notifications in the Settings app. There is another option you need to disable. First, click on the System option on the left side. Then, head over to Notifications. Scroll down to the bottom and select additional settings. Uncheck the box that says Get Tips and Suggestions when using Windows. After a fresh install of Windows, you might see a lot of programs and apps starting up automatically, which can slow down your computer. To fix this, go back to the settings and click on Apps on the left side. Then, look for the Startup option on the right. At the bottom, you'll find a list of apps. Just turn off the ones you don't need to launch when your computer starts. After I install Windows, I usually tweak a few settings in the Windows Update section. I go to Settings and click on Windows Update on the left side. Besides just checking for updates to ensure everything is installed, I enable the option to get the latest updates as soon as they come out. This way, I can access new features before many others and fix some bugs. However, as some of you might be aware, turning this on can also bring in new bugs. Another adjustment I make is in the advanced options. If you want other Microsoft products like Office, the Xbox app, Edge, and so on to update at the same time as Windows updates, you should enable the option to receive updates for other Microsoft products. When you're getting your computer ready, it's important to choose your default apps. For instance, if you prefer not to use Microsoft Edge as your main browser, go to the settings. On the left side, Click on Apps, and then on the right, look for Default Apps. Find the program you want to change, select it, and since I've already switched them to Chrome, I'll just go through the rest to make Chrome the default for the other file types. Just select it and hit Set Default, then keep following the steps. Let's adjust some display settings to enhance your experience. First. Go to the settings and select system on the left side, then click on display. The blue light emitted by your monitor can interfere with your sleep and cause eye strain. To help with this, you can turn on the night light feature, especially in the evenings. Just toggle it on and you can also change the strength if needed. I usually find the default setting works well. Additionally, you might wanna set a schedule for when night light is active. You can choose to have it run from sunset to sunrise based on your location, where you can customize the hours to fit your needs. Let's go back a bit and scroll down. 
We need to click on the drop down arrow for the scale. Sometimes, when you connect a monitor, the scaling can get a little weird. For this one, it suggests using 125%, but I'm okay with sticking to 100%, so I'll just keep it like that. It might take some experimenting to get the scaling just right. Scroll down and head over to Advanced Display Settings. From there, select the refresh rate that suits your monitor best. The higher the refresh rate, the smoother the visuals will appear. It seems like this one is already set correctly, so I'll just keep it as is. To help minimize distractions while you're working, playing games, or engaging in other activities, you should consider activating Do Not Disturb in your settings. Go to the system menu on the left, select Notifications, and turn on Do Not Disturb. This will allow notifications to come through to the notification center, but you won't hear any sounds or see pop-ups every time you get one. Right after you install Windows, go ahead and open the Windows Security app. You can find it in your system tray or simply search for it in the search box. Once you're in, click on Virus and Threat Protection and click on Manage Settings. Most of these options should be enabled by default, but it's a good idea to double check and make sure none of them are turned off. Make sure real-time protection is on and also enable drive protection. Keep scrolling down and turn on cloud delivered protection and automatic sample submission. Finally, don't forget to enable tamper protection. If you're using Windows security instead of a third-party antivirus to keep your computer safe from viruses and malware, it's important to ensure that it's up to date. To do this, click on Virus and Threat Protection. You might need to scroll down a bit to find protection updates. This will show you the last time it was updated. Even if it looks fine, it's always a good idea to click check for updates to make sure everything is current. Depending on how you use your computer, it's important to pick a power plan that suits your needs. To change your power plan, just search for a power plan and select choose a power plan. Keep in mind that the options you see might vary based on your computer's brand. If you want to enable high performance or ultra performance, you can do that by opening the command prompt as an administrator. Copy and paste these commands. I'll include the commands in the description for easy copying. Close up your power plan settings and open it again for the changes to manifest. When you click on the drop down arrow, you can clearly see the high performance and ultimate performance has been added. If you mainly use your computer for casual tasks like browsing the internet or using office applications, the balance plan should work well. However, if you're into gaming, video editing, or other demanding tasks, you should select high performance. Since I edit videos and play games on my computer, I'll definitely choose high performance. Windows has kept file extensions hidden by default, which can pose a security threat. Imagine clicking on what you believe is a document, only to find out it's actually an executable file ending in exe. This could be malware or ransomware pretending to be a normal file. To make file extensions visible, just open File Explorer, click on View at the top, go to show, and then select file name extensions. Now you can see the file extensions clearly. A lot of people are upset that Microsoft is really pushing for everyone to use a Microsoft account instead of the traditional local accounts. Personally, I use several devices and I actually like how my data and settings sync automatically across them. However, this does mean that Microsoft can see more of what I'm doing, what I search for, and how I use my computer. If you value your privacy and want to keep your data and settings stored locally, switching to a local account might be a good choice for you. To do this, just go to Settings and Select Accounts. Click on your info, and you'll see that I'm currently using my Microsoft account. You can choose to sign in with a local account instead. Just click that option and follow the instructions in the pop-up window. Don't worry, you won't lose any of your local data when you make the switch. That's it for today's video. If you found it useful, please give it a like and share it with your friends. I'd love to hear your own tips, so don't hesitate to comment below. If you're new here, 
Make sure to subscribe so we can keep in touch. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.